So, Alex Chinoeth, it is so great to have you back on my show. I mean, I have to tell you, you are my most interviewed interviewee. <laughs> 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 that's, that's great well i love talking to you too <laughs> that's great and here i am you know under the fake aurora and there you are with the real galaxy hanging in your window so i think yeah we're ready we're ready to talk and you know what made me want to talk to you again is because some years ago in the first interview we did we did that we had we were chatting on the thames um, and we were talking about education because, of course, you're a teacher. And you said something, I mean, quite prescient and quite meaningful at the time. And at the time sounded like, why would this be true? Because you said, you know, how we're going to, education is going to look very different and the role of teachers is going to look very different. And I think that our current education system is not going to be able to it's not viable it'll change because you know we're increasingly more technological right. and if you look at our children they know more about the internet than we do they know how to get around any sort of filter we put in they know how to program our mobile phones they know how to do this that shortcut and that shortcut the kids are going to be teaching us how to use technology and i don't think you know teachers like me will be around but we'll have different uses yeah and a lot more stuff will be done uh, on the technological, on, on computers, maybe from home. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 there is a revolution in the air for education. That's it amazing. Has to be. You've just looked again at what you said there, and you know, even when you're saying it, it looks like one of those crazy predictions that someone's just like saying. And here we are, just a few years later, and things have changed a lot, not only in education but everywhere else. So. Firstly, as a teacher on the field, in the field, out there, are you seeing these changes? Yeah, so um, let me tell you why I, I thought we we're going to be learning from home or on computers is because mm. of the uh, Jupiter-Saturn uh, conjunction in, at, at zero degrees Aquarius in December, I think it was 2020. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was looking at. And, but I didn't mean bring a plague on all of us, you know. I, 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 I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't intend for didn't that to happen, why. or didn't, 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 you know, didn't expect that. I, but I just thought that for some reason, um, learning from home on yeah. computers. Um, so when the pandemic happened, you know, and schools were starting to shut down, and I remember the last two weeks of school, fewer and fewer kids coming in, and you know, we knew that it it was going to be called. And we were trying to prepare students for learning at home. So we did a lot of photocopying, a lot of getting resources together for parents. And, you know, that that poor photocopier, <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was what did that, trying to collate everything and make sure it's grade appropriate and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we worked really hard to get this done. And um, said goodbye to the kids at Gates. Some of us are crying because, you know, we just couldn't believe what was happening mm. and i'm walking home uh, and and looking at all these learning packs just blowing in the wind like parents had even bothered to take care of them and i just thought oh boy wow. <laughs> you know? i yeah. thought oh dear this is going to be this is going to be a wild ride and um so i didn't i didn't teach during lockdown um i, I stayed at home um playing it safe um but i did a lot of coaching with parents because parents I'm in my neighborhood knowing I'm a teacher, you know, how do I do this? And a lot of parents had the idea that teaching was all about just talking at your child for an hour. Oh, yes. And that, that was your math lesson. They didn't understand, <laughs> okay, you give some instructions, let them work, check the work, different task, have a little break. You know, they didn't quite get that. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of things went wild. And I, and I don't think we've quite recovered from it, you know, you know, you know, two, three years on, I yeah, still, yeah. we can, us teachers can still see learning gaps. We could still tell, you know, which children were engaged in learning during lockdown and which children fell behind because they were allowed to play games on their mobile phones. And, um, you know, so it was, it's, it's, it was quite a time for education. And, and I think we're left with the remnants that parents seem to think that they know more than teachers now because they <laughs> taught the children at home. Yeah. So that's, inter that's interesting too. But um, yeah, I, I I still think there's been quite a lot of damage, um, and you know I 
um, I'm, you know, I'm close to my second Saturn return, so I'm not going to be teaching for too much longer. So, you know, I'm looking at the exit route too. You mm. know, how 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 I'm going to retire, and you know, what's retirement going to look like for me? So, yeah. So that's the story about how I, um, maybe not quite predicted lockdown, but thought we we're going to be learning from home. Well, that makes a lot of sense in that way. You know, one of the things I thought with the whole COVID experience and looking at the astrology of how these great big cycles, like, you know, that one, Saturn Pluto was involved with COVID and so on, that every few decades, there are these epidemics or wars that end up changing society as a whole. So, you know, the late 60s when we saw and the ensuing changes eventually changes everything. And I always thought, okay, well, one of the things that's going to happen with the, the post-COVID era is that every industry, every way we do everything is realigning itself. We saw the panic during COVID. How do we save our businesses? And everyone went online and everything went online and work went online. Now we're seeing around the world, you know, companies struggling to get their workers back into the office because there's been a sea change. And so the same, of course, with education, where people were educating kids on Zoom. And I was saying somewhere behind the scenes, somewhere, someone is designing new technology way beyond Zoom that's going to allow education at home. And one of the things you said in that clip that we looked at is how you know education is going to be different, but there will still be a role for, for teachers, although it will also be very different. What will be the role for teachers? You're not just sitting there like on Zoom. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I think overall, the teachers are talking a lot more about, you know, how we're treated as a profession. You know, we're not just glorified babysitters. Um, mm. but we went to a really good, a good patch early on in the pandemic where everyone was like, oh, we love our teachers. <laughs> and then and then the pendulum swung the other way and it was like, get yourselves back into the classroom. You know, don't be so lazy and fearful and stuff like that. And um, <laughs> so mm. we kind of swung back the other way a little bit in that, you know, I think, you know, there is some appreciation from parents, you know, that we do provide safe places for children to be. We do take care of them and feed them well and, you know, um, you know, help them as much as we can. But we're still shorthanded. Mm. You know, um, in this age of neurodiversity, right. you know, there's more and more um, diagnoses of of autism and and and, all, and its spectrum, and all sorts of other different things. And I think it's wonderful that we, you know, have a system where we, we integrate and we don't separate um, um, different abilities. So, um, in that regard, I think we're doing quite well. But we just need more. If we're going to make all these diagnoses, we need more hands mm -hmm. on deck. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, you know, I, I think, um, I, I just think that teachers are still leaving the profession in droves. That doesn't help much. And I think that they're even more dissatisfied than they were before. And I, and I think this is more particularly true in the States, but it's also this uh, dissatisfaction here in England. Um, you know, I, I, I've known many teachers, more teachers than before, where they're not just changing schools they're actually leaving the profession to do something else hmm. and that's and that's a little worrying um because i've said in previous lectures that i've done on astrology and education is that the average teacher um does all this training because your your teacher's training is hell on earth <laughs> you know yes, teaching so an unnatural thing to, to learn how to do and and then they're only uh it takes so much time to you know when, when they get to a new school to help them become you know properly trained to do their what we call the the entry year um it's got another fancy name but you know what i mean they do their mm -hmm. college education and then they do their online work training and you know it's just so difficult and then we put so much effort into these new teachers and then they leave after only a few years wow. so it's it's very rare to get a veteran teacher like myself um and I, I'm, I'm going to credit astrology for keeping me in the profession I think well, I would have given it up many, many years ago if I didn't know and understand the Jupiter and Saturn cycles. I'm, so, I mean, it, clearly the profession still, you know, it's underappreciated, underpaid, under-resourced in every way. So transition into an increasingly digital world, it requires money, it requires 
intellectual in, input as new things are designed who's going to be doing all of that if no one really seems to realize the value of education um you know um as you said i think you know with ai and things like that i i i just think that you know we're going to be losing the human touch yeah um, you know, um, like I said, with neurodiversity, um, if we're going to continue teaching the way we are now, which is one teacher in the classroom, we need more hands on deck. But I think with the way things are going, and given that the educational system is always the first one to lose funding mm. in favor of the military or, or whatever, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, it, 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 there, there's going to be an age where kids are just looking at computers and because it can all be tailored to their needs. They could just sit there taking tests all day. But they mm -hmm. will lose, like I say, out on the human interaction. But then, you know, I got to swing back the other way and say, well, look what mobile phones do to us. You know, we can put our headphones on and be a whole little world playing playing games. You and I just admitted before we started <laughs> recording that you and I <laughs> play a lot of games. Instead you of have doing, to say that on air, of course. Sure. <laughs> instead, <laughs> instead of, you know, doing our work, you know, but it's really easy to get into your own little world. Um, and I had a teacher friend who was walking down the road with headphones on, not looking where he's going, got hit by a motorbike. You know, so this is this kind of thing of not being aware of your environment. Mm. And the, I just saw a police warning yesterday about, you know, watch what you're doing when you got your mobile phone out because there's organized thieves that will aim to take them. Sure. So, you know, we we can't just close in on, on our own, on our own... Yeah world um we have to keep trying but that seems to be the way we're going and i remember 20 years ago perhaps um we were being we were doing in a teacher's training and um it, the point was raised that children know more about technology than the teachers do and this is true even now it's true yeah. they, if i have a problem with my mobile phone i'm far more likely to ask a younger colleague to sort it out for me yeah. Um, I can't ask a kid to sort it out because that's, uh, you know, a, ch um, a child protection issue. But, you know, I will certainly ask a younger colleague to help me out or, or my daughter. Um, and, um, you know, or if I say something in class about, you know, some app, a kid will know more about the app than I do. So, yeah. you know, that just seems to be the direction that we're going. But we still have these human issues to deal with um, in, in schools. Um, it was pretty bad once the kids came back that you know one day they're all happy to see each other the next day they're all on on social media mm. um uh, being mean to each other again which is another thing is social media yeah that's the a big issue is that meanness that it seems to bring out the worst in everyone i i can't believe the things that people say i mean i'm, I'm a part of um the local community um both here in london and home in detroit and I just can't believe somebody will come up and say something really almost like I found a kitten. Mm. And then 20 people will find something to, you know, really mean to say about, you know, somebody yeah. finding a kitten. Um, and of course, all the all the riots that I was saying before we started in, here in, in England, you know, winding each other up and, you know, making plans to, you know, go and create chaos in, in certain places. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I... Um, in 2005, um, social media roughly started coming out. And, um, you know, we don't understand the impact social media has had on our children until we see them grow up. So we're just yeah. seeing that generation, uh, you know, come into adulthood. And I have to say, you know, I get a little nervous with what I'm seeing. I, I think there's a lot that needs to be done to kind of find the way. I don't know how they will do it. But children are clearly the critical population when it comes to social media. And uh, again, I mean, people should be paying more attention to that. But one of the things I want to pick up on, you talk about the neurodiversity and kids with autism. Oh. Kids with autism, of course, we know they have social problems. They, they uh, struggle when there's more too many people around them. Do you think they might benefit from a more at-home it, a digital education? Um, yes and no. I, I think that even though they might struggle with social interactions, I think it's important to keep them in in the social arena. Yeah. Um, so when we have assemblies, you know, you can have 400 kids in, a, in an assembly, an all-school assembly. Um, they will put the headphones on. 
Oh, and okay. you know, um, so that the the at least the noise is partially blocked. So there's ways of coping with that. Mm. Um, but yeah, in in lots of ways, the different types of um, autism can be helped, and and then I think it is helped. Um, but so yeah, yes and no to that. I I, st I still think you know they need to have that human contact, and and also I think that um, there are ways of you know helping them to to learn more effectively without um, being distracted. Yeah, I mean that's exactly the same issue with digital on the one hand it's super distracting on the other hand it's super informative so it's potentially both sides of the story here in uh, south africa um there is now a, an entirely online high school i think it was constructed by the university of cape town it was in response to COVID, and they created an all online high school program you know that I mean, I guess being a university, they must be doing some research, but hopefully that will lead to research on how these systems could work or do or don't work. Um, you know, I don't hear much about it, but I see that it still exists and uh, ongoing now post-COVID. Doesn't sound though, I mean, high school and, and school itself, you know, junior school as well, the, the socialization is just as important as the education so in a you know an increasingly digital future that is a real threat i just um um watched a netflix series and the name escapes me but it was about children who had been um unmanageable at home so their parents put them in like these like schools um that were really super strict I mean, like they marched and stepped to each lesson and they weren't allowed to go outside and they had to sleep, you know, bunks. They were kidnapped from the rooms, handcuffed, you know, so they couldn't get away and take into these mm -hmm. schools far away, like in these really remote areas. And, you know, the, the, um, and, and never allowed to like, contact each other once, you know, ever again, you know, wow. someone came to collect them or whatever, but their education was all done online. So they mm -hmm. weren't allowed to interact. If they were moving between classes, they weren't allowed to look at each other. Um, they were weren't allowed to talk when in the in the um, canteen. You know, it was just really, really unnerving to see what a lack of human interaction uh, can do to people. Wow, uh, I mean, it sounds like it's a it's a bigger problem than it can help, which maybe means that there still is a very good future for in person teachers and old fashioned style teaching. You know, if we look at other aspects of the digital world, I mean, I don't think anyone thought we'd see vinyl records again. <laughs> and yeah, they are taking over the music industry again. And digital books still exist, but everyone's going back to print. It's now selling more than digital again. And maybe we will naturally find a middle path that makes us find the best way to kind of use both the real world and the digital world together for education because of course the potential everyone looks at digital and says oh you can learn you can learn anything on youtube and um all the information is in in the world is out there which is true which is then why is everyone seemingly getting dumber and maybe the problem <laughs> is that we still need teachers who are firstly trained and educated themselves to channel and guide and teach and educate, lead out the knowledge so that these people actually use this knowledge. It's not just a bunch of surface mixture of real and fake information. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned about um, um, books and, and vinyl records. It's also like um, there's a novelty in looking at old old school yeah. um, like the telephones with the rotary dial. Yes. <laughs> you know? um, yeah. I remember when I was a kid, give away my age but um um you know having a party line where you, you had yeah. to wait for the other people to leave the line so you could yeah. call somebody um and you know you'd have someone to interrupt you and tell you to get off the line you know yeah. um and just things like you know i remember getting rid of all my um my disc my you know um my cds um because i thought I, they're, they're all stored online and yeah. a lot of my a lot of my books too because i can just i have kindle you know so de decluttering 
Um, but yeah, I, th I think there is something very comforting about sitting down, opening up a, a real book and reading it on a cold night. There is something you know, yeah. really nice about the difference in sound on a, a vinyl record uh, 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 compared to uh, a digital recording. Hmm. And and so hopefully that happens with everything. So here's a thought that maybe gives us a bit of optimism in the world of education. You were saying a, a little while ago how you know, you've got to turn to younger people to really use the technology effectively. And I'm talking about how new apps and new systems will be devised for education. Perhaps by turning to the younger generation or finding a system within the schooling system so that it's not a child protection issue but it's an organized system where the the youngest generation are able to contribute in terms of creating digital systems so that they feel engaged and motivated so that they start seeing the the positive side of digital technology instead of just social media etc maybe that's the way it'll happen yeah um there are some before the pandemic, there was a like a real uh, controversy about should we allow mobile phones in classes? Because there are apps that you can use. There's a scanner app where um, a, a child can hold uh, hold up. Um, I can't remember what the, the codes. Um, the the QR codes, code. Yeah, yeah, and a teacher can scan it. Uh -huh. You know, scan those codes, and they they instantly come up with you know what percentage of the class got the the, the um the question right because you can't visually interpret um, the mm -hmm. QR code. You have to, it has to be scanned. Um, and so, you, you know, you don't know which child is right, but the child knows when that they're right because they've actually obviously chosen the, the card. So that, that was interesting. But, um, and parents want their children to have mobile phones so they can keep track of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a problem in England, but in the States it is a problem because they have guns and that problem yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't believe, you know, in, in here in England, um, and I guess since the um, the Thomas Hamilton shooting up in Dunblane, um, schools are like fortresses, um, mm. you know, that, you know, you have to, you know, ring to be let in, you, um, you know, steel cages around the schools to keep the children safe. And, you know, you have, um, if I go into a school, even though I'm a teacher, I still have to show all my credentials. I have to have my photograph taken. All these things have to be done. But in the States, I couldn't believe it. In my niece's school, I could just walk straight into reception and no one even challenged me. You know, yeah. so I thought that was that was really weird. Just talking about child safeguarding. And yeah, like since that. that's the country where people go with guns into a school. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It so, is. On the whole, would you say you feel optimistic or not about education unfolding in the future? Um, I think one problem, um, and, and this might be a little controversial, but that's okay because it's you. <laughs> <laughs> one of the reasons why I think you know teachers are treated so badly is because it's a female-dominated industry, and it always has been. And you know, I and I think that also it was always looked at as kind of like almost like, you know, just an extension of motherhood, only it's more children and uh, women are natural mothers. You know, I think there's, mm -hmm. there's that sort of factor. And, you know, when education first started out, only unmarried women could be teachers. You know, so I think there's that factor. So if yeah. we can get away from that and, and make it more enticing for um, young men, because I think this is important that young men are involved because a lot of boys need father figures. Yeah, make it more enticing and make it more fair for teachers. Um, and and parents need to do their fair share too. They need to get interacting with the school curriculum, which uh, the pandemic did teach them a little bit more about you know how how we manage the curriculum. Yeah. So they had to be engaged with that. So as long as they keep doing that, um, and we have to get away from this idea that one parent evening per year is adequate. Yeah. You know, and and, and also. You know, then it puts more pressure to see on teachers because then teachers also complain about emails. You know, how many emails or parents are costing them at the school gates, you know, to ask them questions. So, you know, there. I just think I'm going to stick with more hands on deck. You know, I'm going to stick with that until until we find a way to make ed, uh, learning um, more cooperative effort between parents and teachers. There's a great app 
um, yeah. that we use a lot, but this is for behavioral management called Classroom Dojo, where it's got the whole class and you can award points, you know, if a child's oh. being well behaved and the parents yeah. can access that. But the thing I found is that parents don't access it. They don't pay attention to it. So, you know, there, there must be a way to, you know, encourage parents to be involved without making it a long drawn out process, you know, where you have to make an appointment to go see somebody. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, that is promising to me because there, somewhere in there, I think there is a digital solution. So maybe, we, you know, we still want classrooms to be in-person brick and mortar classes. But on the one hand, to overcome the one day a year teacher, teacher parent day, to overcome the emails and the mobbing the teacher occasionally, if there was some system, because the, the parent doesn't have to leave work or doesn't have to leave home, they can use digital technology to engage, whether it's once a week or whatever it is, even if it's just for five minutes, because you can do that, you don't have to get into your car and drive somewhere. And maybe there'll be a way that digital and, and brick and mortar get to work together that way to the benefit of the child. And it isn't so much about teaching through the digital medium, but it's creating a bigger environment that includes a digital environment that can actually support the kid. That's, I think, maybe... Something yeah, I think I think that's possible, but it has to be very, very secure. Yeah, you know, it ha I mean, we're because now that does go into safeguarding territory. You know, it, yeah. you know, just think about what could happen if um if somebody somehow accessed all those grades or comments or whatever and, yeah. and was able to distribute it. You know, it'd be a huge a huge problem. Yeah. We've still got um, security issues digitally, and and what you were saying, I mean, also the deeper issues that sexism has to be dealt with and the way that women are treated by society has to be dealt with it's a bigger it's more important than attracting young men itself doesn't solve the problem you've actually got to get rid of this idea that women are somehow it's okay to pay them less it's okay to ignore their work it's crazy that we're in the 21st century and that's still the world and we see it we've seen it in so many ways that it's the issue is as bad as it's ever been yeah, and the same goes for nursing. Mm, very much um, so. Female, female dominated, but they'll pay, you know, some fool kicking a ball around a field millions of pounds a year, uh, you know, um, just to, exactly. yeah, just to um, yeah. have a big, I guess they have a big audience, they could sell tickets or whatever. It'd be, it'd be great if we can get school to be <laughs> that enticing yeah. and um, exactly. that, that interesting to a crowd or, or whatever. Um, but, you yeah. know, it, schools are amazing um communities and you know because what i do uh, i do i think i've i've mentioned this before but i'll just repeat it i'm a supply teacher so that means i work get to work around in different schools mm -hmm. and you know i can really see you know the difference in in communities around schools and um you know i'll you know lead depends on, depends on the head teacher of course yeah but it's 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 fascinating to see um, you know, you could have one one school where everything feels kind of flat and kind of like nothing much goes on. Another school where the kids are almost overexcited and you know hard to hard to um hard to hard to I won't say control that's not the right word but just hard to contain I think um, so that they are they're safe in the classroom because people te teachers our main job is to teach and I I always argue no our main job is to keep children safe you know have those good classroom rules so nobody gets their feelings hurt you know make sure that you know if you're going to run around the playground that you're not going to run into somebody you know um give them advice about you know how to manage um the internet you know don't give your full name away don't give up to your address those kinds of things now when social media first came out um you know because children couldn't go on facebook and i think twitter until they were 13. yeah but when so social media first came out we spent um because i was in pastoral care back then we spent most of our time dealing with things on social media but now we teach the children you know this is how this is what you do and how you manage it so we're like like have caught up sort of in, yes. in what we expect children to do pardon my cosmic curtain <laughs> <laughs> i'll keep it, I'll keep it managed <laughs> yeah, it's the cosmic wind. There is a cosmic wind. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm a mixed bag, I think, for, for the future of education. You know, I, I hope things get better. You know, I hope we get away from this hierarchy, this tier 
yeah. of things. I mean, I, I see why it's necessary, but I also see, you know, there's ways of having more teamwork, more ways of, you know, bringing together ideas where teachers feel appreciated, where parents feel their contributions are appreciated. And, and you touched on this, where children feel that they are actually shaping their own education too. We do this a bit through student council. Yeah. But that's, you know, we I think we need to just touch on that a little bit more, but we, we do it a little bit. That sounds like some a future to look forward to. And if somehow the end results after years of the of the pandemic takes us in that direction, then something good came of it after all. So hopefully there's that. Yeah, you know, we're in, in uncertain times because we have um, Neptune on Saturn on the final degree. Um, you know, so I think, you know, that makes everything seem a little bit, all the structure and things that we thought we could rely on, mm. they're, they're sort of crumbling and dissolving, and we're starting to see the illusion. Um, and, you know, I, I think that we need to, to work with that. Um, I know we're going to talk, talk about education, but I want to just like interject something Dude, that you talked joking. about before, is that um, with Saturn and Pisces, um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of dream work based on your technique. Um, and you know, I've I've just been finding it absolutely fascinating, mm. and um, you know, people bringing seem to be taking their dreams a lot more seriously. And what I mean by dreams is not just like your future endeavors, what you aspire to, but what you actually dream about when you're unconscious. And um, you know, I I find with working with dreams, you know, it's really interesting to hear people what they what they dream yeah. about <laughs> because it, it can be really wild and. Yeah. Um, you know, helping them find meaning with that. And um, your technique is really proven to be very, very useful to me. But I just, right. you know, want to say to the audience, you know, do keep a dream journal, you know, take a note of your dreams and, you know, try to find meaning in them. That's great. I think one day we're going to come back and have a conversation about dreams. But that's <laughs> really been great food for thought. And it'll be interesting if anyone... Uh, who sees us on YouTube might have a comment because um, I think there are quite a few educators who watch this. So it'll be interesting to see. And I look forward to seeing you next time when hopefully not only we're talking about dreams, but we're talking about, well, some of those predictions came true and they were the good ones <laughs> yet again. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Rod. Much love. Oh.